Ellsworth hype. Those that know, right? <laughs> You're looking cross-eyed, buddy. <laughs> See, man, efficiency matters. <laughs> This is our epiphany. This particular epiphany happens to be in our Project Pink color, which we introduced last year. Uh, each pink bike that we sell, uh, Ellsworth donates $50 to two uh, charities, the Marsha Rivkin Center for Ovarian Cancer Research and the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. Back to the epiphany. It's a five and a quarter inch platform. Uh, the epiphany is basically built to be an excellent trail bike or a cross country bike. It weighs pretty much the same as the truth, so the weight is very, very light. It's a, definitely a lightweight bike. But uh, we've uh, lengthened the wheelbase just a touch, tweaked the geometry just a little bit, tweaked the, uh, the center of weight and that type of thing. It handles like a dream, it's super stable without compromising any of the lightweight things that you love about a truth. New for this year, we've got, uh, we've resurrected the Dare, and uh, we developed the Dare for use with uh, Team Maxis. And Cameron and Luke and April Lawyer actually campaigned uh, the DARE all year long on uh, National and World Cup downhill circuits. Uh, in developing the DARE, we really, in the past, we've tried, kind of tried to have the DARE uh, fill both the free ride category and the downhill category. The problem is, is that, uh, you know, free ride really needs a bike that is maneuverable in the woods, tight situations, low speed handling, and, you know, full speed World Cup downhill requires a bike that's stable handling high speeds. It's just a dip, it's just become a different platform. So the Dare for this year, actually completely resurrected, all dialed in, uh, working with Team Maxis and uh, getting a full World Cup downhill geometry. Next thing I'm about to show you is top secret. We resurrected the roots. The Ellsworth roots was originally made in, uh, boy, I believe it was 1996 for uh, Dale Knapp to campaign in the Cyclocross Nationals and Worlds. Uh, lots happened since 1996. This year we made just a a couple of handfuls, actually four handfuls of roots. This will be a limited edition cyclocross bike for us this year. And uh, Thomas Petrinko, our uh, international sales guy, who's also an avid racer, and uh, it's kind of his pet project. He goes, let's resurrect it. I got it, just a few handfuls of guys. But uh, actually, um, Control Tech, the team up in the Pacific Northwest, will be uh, campaigning jointly the roots with us. And, uh, you know, we're excited to do that. The roots is a is something that I named for cyclocross because it kind of gets us back to the roots of why we like to ride in the dirt. You know, long before there were mountain bikes, there were cyclocross bikes, just people wanted to get and play in the dirt. So it's kind of the roots of uh, mountain biking. This is my good dealer in, out of uh, Chicago, Illinois, Mike Richards, Richards Bikes. And uh, he just asked me about the wheels, which are brand new for this year. Uh, we sort of soft launched them last year, but wheels really load from the axle out. Right where they attach to the bike is where all the loading is. And if you were to look at a finite, finite element analysis assessment of the loading of a wheel, you'd see, you know, it'd be bright red down there by the axle. And then as it moves out toward the end of the wheel, it, you know, the loading reduces up right to where the spokes attach to the rim. So if, if, you, if you think about that and you think, okay, well, the wheel really has to roll while it's loaded, a particularly a mountain bike wheel, which is taking all the impact and everything from every single bump, translating right through that axle, through the dropouts, right where the, where the contact patch is to the bike is the most important. So what I wanted to do is put a lot of good mass and the, the quality of the bearings and the number of the bearings and the size of the bearing, I wanted to pay special attention to that so that when there's a 200 pound rider, 180 pound rider taking, you know, 50, you know, 50 mile an hour, 30 mile an hour hits on the bike, no matter how big the hit is, that those bearings would still perform because we're dissipating the load over a larger surface area. The most important thing you'll notice uh, about the Ellsworth wheels is that the, the bearings are, are very large and then uh, the next spot where the load goes is to the spoke, which is going to carry it out to the end of the wheel. We use a patented quadruple butted spoke. <clears throat> so if you zoom in really close there, you can see that the head of the spoke, where normally that load would, would want to fatigue and break that spoke or get flex in this part of the spoke, the head of that spoke is very, very big and then it tapers down, and it tapers down again, finally makes the fourth taper and then tapers back up to the same taper here. So you're finishing with a 14 gauge. This isn't showing the nipple because it's carbon fiber, the nipple's internal. But uh, you're finishing with a 14 gauge uh, nipple, but you're down to like a 12 gauge or like 11 and a half gauge uh, head where the, where the quadruple butted 
straight pull spoke is. So we're really maintaining a lot of stiffness in the wheel from the bearing out. The other big thing that I was uh, wanted to pay attention to on the wheels is you see a general movement, everybody wanting to go to a bigger tire. I want to put a 2.2, I want to put a 2.3, and gee, I lose mud clearance. Well, the reason you're losing mud clearance is you can take, you know, no matter how big the circle is, if you're bringing it around to go on a 30 millimeter wide rim or a 28 millimeter ride or 25 millimeter wide rim, all that's going to happen with that circle is it's just going to turn oblong and get taller. And that's not, that's not getting you a larger contact batch on the ground. It's just getting you more rubber weight and it's getting you less mud clearance in front of the tire. Well, so what I wanted to do is offer a wheel where across the board, I could do my own little analysis and say, okay, well, this particular rider, for example, if we go back to our 32 millimeter wheel that we started looking at, yeah, this is the all mountain wheel. The wider one. Yeah. To try and say, okay, this rider that wants an all mountain wheel, this guy's wanting, you know, a significant contact patch on the ground. And so in order to get that contact patch, rather than have that rider have to go to a 2.3 or 2.4, uh, inch wide tire. I wanted to offer a 32 millimeter rim platform, which is a little heavier than other all mountain wheels you can get. But by the time you put a 2.1 or 2.2 on it and get a big contact patch on the ground, your entire wheel weight is way lower. Also, we've got a stiffer wheel. Aluminum is lighter than rubber. Aluminum is stiffer than rubber. So you have a lot better trackability and control and strength in the wheel by you know, using a little larger cross section on the rim extrusion. So we have the 32 millimeter all mountain, it's the 40 millimeter rogue wheel. This uh, ship standard on the uh, with the rogue has a 12 millimeter through rear axle and 20 millimeter on the front. And then we have the uh, cross country, cross country aluminum. And then we have a cross country carbon fiber. So this is the moment, kind of uh, next up the the travel game. It's a six inch travel bike. It's configured specifically uh, with the Fox DHX platform and a 36 Fox front fork, so you have six inches, match travel front and rear. One of the things we did this year in an effort to be able to do, uh, deliver more timely is we actually made an investment in a beautiful five axis horizontal milling station. And uh, it allows us to do some, some great detail on our machine parts. That's the Rogue. That is just an incredible all mountain free ride bike. One of the things that uh, a lot of the, a lot of the real, uh, you know, like a downhill trial style rider, the low speed drops and low speed maneuvering. One of the things they love about the bike is that it has the eight inches to absorb just about anything. But because of the energy efficiency of instant center tracking, they can pedal kick the bike like nothing else with that kind of travel. They've got great control over the bike. This frame, is extremely lightweight, even with the coil shock for a bike with eight inches of travel, it's been super durable. Um, and it's just, it's built for all day rides for people that absolutely got to have eight inches of travel because they're going to aim it down stuff that nobody else will try. But they want a bike they can ride in the mountains. The Rogue comes uh, standardly configured for a triple chain ring. It does also have the, uh, the uh, ICG uh, mount on it as well. It's got a 12 millimeter through axle, which goes right on the Rogue wheel set that I showed you a little earlier. And again, we're real proud of the machine details and stuff on the frame. This Rogue's got uh, one of the new Ellsworth saddles on it. We've got two new Ellsworth saddles this year. This one and the one on the Epiphany over there. And uh, very comfortable. The goal was to come up with something super comfortable and lightweight. Uh, really focus on quality. All the saddles are leather and uh, titanium rails and very comfortable. I wanted to show you the we call it ride two. Two for two people. Two for the second one we made and two for tandem. But uh, here it is, as you can see. That, my friends, is the ultimate date machine. Got the new Vinci transmission on the back. It's tandem specific, new for this year. A gear ratio that's uh, comparable to your, you know, a road bike or a city bike. But uh, there's no gears. and. Uh, we're real, real proud of it. It shifts just uh, like butter. You really have to try it to understand how it feels. So we're super proud of the bikes. So I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me rattle on about them, but we're absolutely proud about them here.